Have you ever wondered when you watched other homemaking channels or stay-at-home moms, how are they making it in today's day of hyperinflation? I thought we could talk all about homemaking on a budget, being a low-income family. We are a family of five. And if you're new here, hello, my name is Noelle. I do all kind of homemaking, baking from scratch, cooking from scratch occasionally, as well as thrifting. I thought I would take you along on my day-to-day and just share some homemaking things that I do to kind of save money as well as just the kind of lifestyle we like to live. We like to live more of an under-consumption lifestyle. I know this has been a trend. I don't have TikTok, but I still kind of know the things that are, you know, trending over there because I am a content creator, but I know this whole under-consumption core is a thing or really is it a thing or is it just a trend that TikTok made up? Who knows, right? I just wanted to take you along my everyday and share some of the things that we do to save some money. We are considered low income. My husband actually is not working and hasn't been working for quite a long time. He stopped working when I was pregnant with my last daughter that is four months old so he hasn't been working for quite some time and we have been living on reserves and family support so we are definitely you know pinching our pennies the reason why he is not working is because he is currently in school he is a full-time student right now and you know when you're in school and you're not working and you have a whole family things are going to be kind of tight but we lived this way even before he was even in school So we've lived this way even when he had a full-time job. Anyway, I recorded this video not knowing what I was going to talk about. I've been doing a lot of voiceovers lately just because it's a little easier on me. My house is noisy. I know you mamas can relate. And I thought it would be just fun to do more of this style of video. You guys will get vlogs where I'm talking to the camera directly still here and there. I thought it would be better this way for a lot of my videos because we can have these kind of conversations uninterrupted i can give you my honest my real raw thoughts and yeah so i'm just making myself some coffee i'm going to tell you what i'm doing along the way as well it's a very busy day not every day is this busy yes my son has his shirt on backwards i let my kids get dressed so you know i love those little quirks about kids they're just so cute as you can see i'm multitasking (laughs) i am rocking the baby with one foot and trying to steam some milk for my latte as well. You know, mom's got to multitask. We're the best at it, right? However, yeah. So I recorded this video. And then after you guys, I got a lot of requests for homemaking on a budget. And I didn't know when I was filming this video that this is what we were going to be talking about. But I thought that it would be a very interesting, you know, just taking you through my real raw day and explaining why we do the things that we do and how they kind of save us money along the way now we're not like extreme minimalist or anything like that we do have things in our house but i do really adore minimalism and all of the concepts that it brings i am not going to have nothing on my walls though that's just not who we are um So, you know, I just like to keep things pretty minimal. The first thing I like to do is just make my own coffee (laughs) every morning. Every now and then I will go out to my favorite local coffee shop and support them. But getting a home espresso machine or coffee maker is going to save you so much money where you're not running out to Starbucks or whatever your favorite coffee is. Another thing, I'm showing you this beautiful dough table that I got on Facebook market. So Facebook market is, (laughs) I live there. Okay. I am constantly scrolling just for fun, but whenever I find something that is just a must have now, our house is pretty fully furnished. We lived here for about a year. So now my house is furnished. So I really don't have many more items that I need to collect to furnish my home, but my whole entire house is furnished with Facebook market or free finds or from another thrift store. And that's just the way I like it, whether I had a million dollars or not, okay? I really enjoy thrifted 
antique vintage furniture. So you're gonna find a lot of that in my home because it's all thrifted, it's all secondhand. I just don't believe in buying full, you know, brand new furniture. Like why pay $5,000 for a couch when you can get one for like 100? Or to be honest, my couch was free, you guys. I found my couch in my living area and I just brought it in my house and it's totally fine. We wiped it, we cleaned it and it was free. I have a lot of free furniture, I have a lot of thrifted furniture, and I feel like this really comes down to style and taste. So, you know, just because it's thrifted or it is secondhand does not mean it has to be ugly. You know what I mean? It's all about style and taste, in my opinion. All right, so moving on, just telling you what I'm doing. I My husband took the baby for a little bit and I decided to make some buns so he was in between quizzes and stuff and he decided to take her which was really appreciated so i got some dinner prep done i make a lot of our food from scratch a lot of our baked goods and breads this saves a lot of money it is so much healthier for you i mean bread is not going to be the healthiest thing because it is calories but by making your own food from scratch as much as possible does save you a lot of money and also it is a lot more healthier than the store-bought. We headed off to the farm after making those buns, which took a little bit of time, but I don't mind. I love putting in the time to make homemade fresh things. We went to the farm and picked up some raw milk, and then we also went around the corner and went to our local lady who sells pasture-raised eggs, and then we hit up the farmer's market. Now with the raw milk, it is $6 a gallon where I live, which is a steal versus sprouts, which is $20 a gallon, which is very expensive. And I love my raw milk, but I stopped drinking it for a while because $20 a gallon just really was too much. And we go through about eight gallons a month. So that is expensive. You guys, I need a cow. Okay. But $6 a gallon is absolutely doable and not too expensive i freeze the raw milk and it tastes just fine and it's great we went to the farmer's market and treated ourselves to a little library trip and a lemonade and just enjoyed our little afternoon and then headed off to the thrift store one thing about thrifting if you're going to be a thrifty kind of person and you want to thrift before you buy brand new is checking the thrift store often this is something we do this is something i just enjoy to do even if i walk away with nothing because i am very intentional about what i want to buy i don't want to just buy any old thing just to say i bought something like if you've noticed i haven't done a thrift haul i feel like in quite a bit because i just haven't been buying a ton of things i don't like to bring in a lot of things into my home like i said I like to keep it pretty minimal. Do you guys see these like funky quilts? I kind of like this baseball one, but it's A's and I'm not an A's fan, but I thought it was cute and it had these pretty floral, this pretty floral like um, border around it. But I thought those quilts were just funny and funky. And yeah, anyway, so just showing you my little thrift and then I'll share a thrift haul with you guys in a moment. But yeah, check the thrift store often and you'll you would be so surprised at what you come across now i know a lot of people don't like thrifting because it is you know a bit of a hit or miss not a bit it's a hit or a miss just depending on where you live your area all of that good stuff but usually i find great things i live in california northern california we have great thrifting out here people in california have money <laughs> they're always donating a ton of things you can get really good deals on furniture and antiques in a lot of these thrift stores if you just look. I try to avoid antique stores because they are very expensive and you can find antiques literally in thrift stores. So 59 cents for a coffee mug, you can't beat it. And they had some really cute vintage ones. So you already know I have a coffee mug thing. I love a good coffee mug and my kids break them often. So I'm always buying more. I have more of a vintage, antique kind of, I don't know what you would even call it, style, cottage core. I don't know what to define my style. I just, you know, like what I like, but I love the character of older things. And it runs in my family. My grandma was an antique collector, my great grandma as well, my mom and my aunt. So <laughs> I used to go to antique shows with them all the time. 
And um, so it kind of just runs in the family. So thrifting really works for me because I find a lot of the older goods and I love that. Here's me trying to attempt to show you the kitchen cookware, which is my favorite section. And I'm actually kicking myself for not grabbing an item that I see <laughs> that I'm probably gonna either have to go back for or order on Amazon. My husband found a Stanley and then we realized we have this very exact Stanley at home. It was my dad's and he um, passed away, but we still have it from so many years ago. We've had it for like 15 years. My dad was a Stanley lover before Stanley was even a trend, okay? We have had Stanley in our home growing up and I'm gonna have to find that thermos for him so he can bring it to school. A little side note. saw this beautiful bassinet and if I didn't already have one I would have got that it was only $20 you guys so I love thrifting anyway for a little thrift haul I got this really cute butter container that is ceramic and I have been using it non-stop ever since I got it and it's just really nice to have butter sitting out do any of you guys like butter that sits out room temperature I have a whole bunch in the freezer and fridge because I am a baker and we bake very often, if not on the daily. I like butter that just sits out on the counter so I can easily spread it for things or if I'm cooking, I could just easily put it in. My favorite to keep is European Grass Butter by, um, what is my favorite one? Kerrygold, I think it is. That butter is so good. Anyways, we're not talking about butter. I'm showing you these cute cups that I was able to get for 59 cents, which is a absolute steal. If you go to Target, you're gonna pay at least $6 for each cup. So I highly recommend to thrift if possible. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. I get that, I hear you. But you know, just every now and then just stop in. I know it takes a little bit more effort, but I am never regretting a thrift trip, okay? I also go on a certain day of the week because senior discount, my mom is a senior, so I am able to get that discount and I love that. It's only like 15, 20%, but you know, it all counts, okay? It all adds up. So if they have a senior day, they have a senior day in my city where every single thrift store is giving you a discount if you are a senior. I love it, I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna take advantage of that. Anyway, on to this beautiful cake plate that I was able to find. Now this was a little bit more pricey. I think it was like $9, almost 10. Absolutely gorgeous and I just couldn't pass it up. I only have one other cake plate, I believe, and so I really wanted to add this to my collection because I do bake cakes from scratch for birthdays. It's kind of a tradition around here. So I wanted to get one that would suit almost everybody's party or celebration that we were having. So, you know, you have a few options at least for a cake plate. There's not many things that I have multiple of, but you know, this was beautiful and I just really, really wanted it. And here's my <laughs> my husband acting so silly. He's such a character. Um, I had to edit most of that out because it just got a little wild. <laughs> and, um, so I got these Pullman pans on Amazon actually, but they were in the used section. So I thrifted these basically, bought them secondhand on Amazon. So I didn't go to a thrift store, but I did buy them on Amazon and saved probably about $15 for two Pullman pans that I have been using nonstop. Highly recommend. If you don't know what they are, they are a bread loaf pan that gives you a really good easy shape so you don't have to worry too much about like the doming or shaping of your bread and it's great. It gives you the softest bread you will ever taste for sandwiches or for French toast, whatever you wanna use it for, it is phenomenal. A lot of you guys, 
a lot of you guys were asking me for the recipe. Oh gosh, we're having a moment here. I'm sorry. A lot of you said you like when I keep the little affections in between me and my husband. If you guys are married, I highly recommend to show affection in front of your children. It makes a world of difference. Let them know that mommy and daddy love each other, okay? Nothing to be ashamed of. Of course, keep it appropriate, but yeah, showing affection in front of your kids is great. Anywho, we are all about it. I got a ton of forks because I don't know what happens to my silverware, you guys, as a mom. I don't know if it's just me. It can't be, but I don't know what happens to my forks and my spoons. I on I just don't understand. All of these forks literally will disappear and I'm sure like two months. I don't understand. I also got that potato peeler. It's not even a potato peeler. It's a cheese peeler or cheese grater. A lot of you were telling me on Instagram, but I used it for potatoes. I used it for cheese to grate carrots or um, peel carrots and it works really good. So I love that little find and it's really cute. Next, we were off to Trader Joe's to do some light grocery shopping. I love to shop at stores that are affordable, obviously, <laughs> especially we all know how expensive groceries are nowadays. It feels like groceries are a luxury, almost like some kind of luxury item. I mean, it is food. We all need it to survive, but it's... <laughs> Groceries are really expensive, and I know I don't have to elaborate on that because I'm sure a lot of you feel it. We definitely do, and I'm just here to let you know it is okay. What used to be maybe like a few bags of groceries, you're walking out with like two bags of groceries for like $100. Like, what? What is happening here? Grocery inflation has been insane. The government knows this. They're doing it on purpose. They're hiking it up so high. That's a whole other a whole other conversation but you know they know we have to eat and food has never been so expensive in our lifetimes as millennials for sure or really just ever okay a lot plays into that and maybe we could talk about that on another day but yeah hyperinflation is crazy and i know a lot of us are feeling it and you guys are not alone i know social media doesn't reflect that because they show mostly the non-normal people, <laughs> as I would say. They show more of the wealthy or the famous or whatever is being pushed out on your feed. A lot of us are not in mansions or, you know, have a farm or whatever the case is. These things are expensive. Even homesteading life is very expensive. And it is a dream that we have and we are currently trying to save up for and is a goal that's why my husband is going back to school because we have many dreams that we would love to come true they're pretty simple dreams but nevertheless still expensive i'm just washing my fruit here because the kids wanted some berries so i put the groceries away and got to cleaning the berries with some baking soda and white vinegar you don't have to do this and just water as well but the kids like to see the chemical reaction that happens with the vinegar and the baking soda and it does clean your food really well, but just using a little bit of vinegar or even just water, okay? When I was a kid, my mom just washed it with water and it was totally fine. Um, but I do it with vinegar a lot of the time. It doesn't make the berries mushy or anything like that. Even with vegetables, it works really good. But um, yeah, that's just what I'm doing here and that's what that bubbly stuff is, okay? My kids love, love that. And yeah, so I don't know. I just wanna want you guys to know that it is okay, a lot of people are struggling. Social media doesn't reflect that. Where are my low income people <laughs> at on social media? I don't know, do they exist? It seems like there's very few because a lot of people don't wanna share their life if they feel like it's not lavish or fancy or whatever. Spending a ton of money, we're very simple here, but I do like to treat myself every now and then. Like, for instance, these flowers. These flowers were like $6 at Trader Joe's, and I think they're gorgeous. They're hydrangeas, which is my absolute favorite. So I'm going to put them in some water with those chemicals that they give you. So hopefully they last a little bit longer and I can enjoy them for a little over a week or so. They were so pretty, but I love these little treats for yourself that may not be in the budget but i find necessary for little you know just extra joys here and there like if coffee is really what you want buying it out or avocado toast or whatever do it 
make room for it in the budget, okay? If it brings you joy, then I feel like, you know, maybe you should add it into the budget. I'm making some chocolate chip cookies for um, these ice cream sandwiches that we've been wanting to make and have been enjoying like all summer. So I'm just doing that. I can leave all the recipes down below. These were brown butter chocolate chips with some really good vanilla bean ice cream. Phenomenal. This time it's not homemade ice cream. It's just uh, store-bought. I didn't have time for all that. But I have made ice cream in the past and it's really good too. Also, talking a little bit about shopping, what I wanted to say is Trader Joe's is a lot more affordable than our other stores around us. Packaging does not matter. I'm just saying I love Trader Joe's for their packaging, but I also love them for their price, which is great. As well as we do a big Costco haul. So when we're not shopping at Trader Joe's or just the corner store down the street, we do a huge Costco haul. Get it in bulk so I don't have to go to the store every week. We save money this way. We buy all of our meat and all of our main things, all of our bulk things like sugar, flour, salt, um, maybe a frozen food just to have on hand, things like that we buy in bulk, things we know we're going to use. So we do a ginormous Costco haul, which you know may not be super relatable for some people, but we find that this is what works really great for us. We don't go too overboard on the snacks, just a few snacks and mainly just the things that we're gonna use. We don't eat out much, so we do need a lot of ingredients to cook all of our food. We do eat out, but one, it's expensive, two, it's not good for you, so we just don't do that a lot. It's just kind of not what we're into. But when we were younger, we ate out a lot. We were eating out one or two times a day, okay? When I was 20, 21, 22, 23 even, we ate out so much, maybe even 24. I am currently 28 and now we cook most of all of our food and maybe eat out once or twice a month, maybe. And that has been working great for us. It saves you a lot of money and way better for your health. So highly recommend to make your own food. I will leave this bread recipe down below. Some of you recommended a either a bread slicer or a template for cutting bread. You guys, to be honest, I've thought about it, but that's just like an item that's kind of unnecessary to me. We don't really mind the uneven loaf pieces. Like, honestly, it's not a big deal for us, but I understand and appreciate the suggestion maybe one day, but I don't like unnecessary purchases and that feels a little bit extra for me at this moment, but maybe, maybe one day. So maybe I'll keep it in the back of my head and see if it's something that I really want to do or really want to get. I'm just bagging up our bread for the week and I also made a cinnamon swirl loaf, which is really good. I will leave the recipe down below for this Pullman loaf. In French, it's called pan de mie. Probably butchered that because I don't speak French, but it is a French recipe, I believe. And it's so good, you guys. You can really use it in so many ways, like cinnamon rolls. You can. We've made cinnamon rolls out of this very exact recipe so delicious so very versatile and love that highly recommend the pullman pans you can make a lot of bread at once which saves you a lot of money and is so much better for your body okay my kids have been requesting me to make these graham crackers homemade graham crackers for a while now we made them a while back and they absolutely loved them so this is like my third time making them i'll leave that recipe down below very simple and the dough is a little bit crumbly. That's the way it's supposed to be though. So don't be like nervous if you try it and it's you know falling apart, it is okay. They are delicious. I like to make them a little bit on the thick side. I don't really like mine as a cracker, to be honest, like a cracker consistency. I like it to be more like, I don't know, bread-like, but they taste delicious, so good. If you've ever had a Trader Joe's graham cracker where they're like thicker, they're a lot softer than like Honeymade or, you know, whatever graham cracker brand you enjoy, they're like the Trader Joe's ones that are soft and kind of thick and honestly so delicious. Um, you know, it's a little extra to make your kids their own homemade snacks. I get that. But I, I don't do it every day, just, you know, now and then. And sometimes it's good to make big batches of 
snacks that you know your kids will enjoy. That way you do not have to buy snacks because again, that is expensive. And usually the ingredient list is a joke and just not good for your body anyway. So taking a little bit of taking a little bit of time to do those kind of things and keeping graham cracker dough in your fridge. It's not super hard to make. Just a few ingredients, you know everything that's in there. Will make your life a little bit easier if you do a little prep ahead. I am a huge prep ahead person. Now, not every day I'm this productive. I wanna put that out there and be so real with you guys. Some days I'm tired and I'm sitting down nursing my baby all day. Also, by the way, if you're wondering, like, where's your baby when you're doing all of this? I'm baby wearing her as well as she napped really well this day. Now, on most days, that is not the case. I have a baby in my hand 24-7 almost walking around the house because she is a very attached baby, which I absolutely love, have no problem with, but it is hard to get things done, just to be transparent with you guys. I'm having this graham cracker with some raw milk. These were a great snack. Highly recommend. 10 out of 10. And, you know, they don't look perfect either. They're just, you know, they are what they are. We're still working on the presentation, but it doesn't have to be perfect. It's homemade, right? Um, I was also dealing with some breast milk a little bit ago. If you were wondering what I was doing, I'm just pouring in breast milk because I am a milk donor and I have a lot of milk. So I just wanted to pour that in there because I'm always collecting milk every day, all day for the babies in need. So that's what I'm doing with the milk in that jar. <laughs> Anyway, um, but yeah, my baby's very attached and so I'm always usually doing things with her in my arms and some days are just not nearly this productive and I just want to let you guys know because it probably looks like I'm doing a ton in this video, which I did do a ton in this video, but I also did prep for it the day before and it just happened to be a day that she napped really well, so hallelujah for that. Okay, so I'm just unboxing my hello bello box my diaper subscription now i would recommend if you really want to save a lot of money is cloth diapering but a girl just cannot commit to that right now it's a big commitment to have to wash diapers and i you know some people will say it's not that not that extra but for me it kind of is i just do not want to put in the time and effort to wash diapers okay no poopy diapers oh i was talking about the diaper bundle. See how I just get like sidetracked? The diaper bundle does save you a lot of money. These are non-toxic diapers, plant-based, fragrance-free, all of that really good stuff. They are really good in the leak department. They don't leak. I mean, unless, you know, it's a huge go to the bathroom moment, but honestly, they're great and it's not sponsored. We've been using them for years. Comes with four packs of wipes. And it's priced really well, ships to your door, and I do like Hello Bello, so that is another way we save money. I forgot that I had a sourdough loaf in the fridge, artisan loaf, so I'm just taking time to score that and throw that in the oven. I forgot to take a final, like, oh, the bread's done video for you guys, sorry. I'm kind of scattered these days, being a mom of three and having a new baby. I'm kind of all over the place doing all kinds of things. It's how my brain works. One moment I'm scoring bread, the next I'm changing a diaper, the next I'm making dinner, the next I'm cleaning up something. You mamas know how it is, okay? A girl is just very busy, being a busy body around the house. But speaking of food, something we really do to save on our grocery budget would to be just cooking with whole ingredients, meaning not a lot of processed foods or you know frozen foods or already made foods. We literally just shop kind of on the outside of the grocery store, meaning produce, meat, you know, butter, things like that, just along the outside mainly. If you go to the grocery store, usually processed foods are more in the middle rows. Of your grocery store you'll kind of notice that as well as it is a lot cheaper just to buy whole ingredients and cook them yourself meaning like potatoes and chicken and rice like whole foods like that where you know they're typically a lot cheaper to buy you know potatoes are cheap rice is cheap pasta is cheap even though you can make that on your own if you really want to 
But yeah, just buying more whole foods and cooking really simply. I love to cook simple meals that aren't going to take too, too long and aren't too fancy with too many ingredients. You guys will see that here in the next few weeks. We like to cook simple meals that are going to nourish our bodies, make us full, but not break the bank and, and just keep it cheaper as well as healthy. Another way we save money would be really living under your means as far as like housing goes. We room share, we have a small, well, I wouldn't say a small house because it's way bigger than what we had before. So probably around like 800, maybe 900 square feet. And we absolutely love it. We're thriving here in this home, but it is a small home. We save on a lot of money because rent is very expensive. Mortgages are expensive as well. Well, typically it seems like mortgages are cheaper than renting nowadays, which is very interesting. So I think the move definitely would be maybe to buy a home. I know there's a lot of interest and stuff involved in that as well. So you kind of just have to weigh your options. I'm not saying that living below your means necessarily is gonna be great for everyone by any means, but for us it works. And it works for now. So yeah, definitely living below your means. We don't mind room sharing. We actually enjoy it. But as our kids get older, we will need we will obviously need more rooms. But if you have small children, I highly recommend it. Stack that money, save that cash, and room share. It's not a big deal. You do not need to have a room for everybody. It's just not necessary. And you can save so much money that way for, you know, maybe a down payment on a house one day. It's all about thinking about the future and maybe sacrificing some things in the meantime to get to where you want to be. We room share and we still have a ton of privacy. The kids go to bed because I know that is a question that we get often like, oh, how do you have privacy like with your kids in the room? Our kids go to bed just like anyone else's kids. So we have a ton of privacy. We have a whole downstairs area that's pretty big. And even when we had a smaller home, we had a ton of privacy, not a problem. Our kids are still very young. And yeah, it's created, room sharing has created and living in a small home has created such a beautiful closeness between our family and it's absolutely beautiful. We just do everything together and I love it so much. So I do not regret living below our means at all. Another way that we save money on devices even electronical devices all of mine are secondhand and refurbished i have a apple macbook air love it it's great but i got it refurbished so it was a lot cheaper as well as my iphone as well i'm always a few iphones behind don't get me wrong i don't care about keeping up with the joneses or having the new iphone 15 that does not interest me as long as it takes decent pictures and you know i can use it for whatever i need it for which are pretty simple needs to be honest but yeah we buy a lot of everything just secondhand or refurbished as well as i don't want to support apple directly because they're a shady company just like every other big corporate company so i don't want to directly support them so i just buy you know everything secondhand facebook market ebay whatever you want to do but also be cautious when you're doing that because you can get scammed. We also have our car. That is an older car, way older, <laughs> but we love it. It's been very reliable and has been great. We actually bought our car off of Facebook Market. That fits a lot of people, I think like seven people. And it's great. So, you know, just really check your resources when it comes to buying things secondhand because you can save so much money and it's just better for the environment and so much better for your wallet. We had burgers this night. My husband actually stepped in and cooked the burgers. He did make a nice hefty mess that I gladly cleaned up because we like to tag team things, especially nowadays because, you know, I'm nursing a baby all the time and sometimes I'm just unavailable. So he did the burgers. They were delicious. I made the buns. I cleaned up and it was just a really great night, but I don't know. I just wanted to take you guys along on how I kind of save money. I don't know. We just don't do a ton of things. We like to do free things like the library, the farmer's market, like you guys saw earlier. 
We, you know, go to friends' houses, have little gatherings, but we just don't spend too much money on outings. And when we do, we really strategically plan a lot of, you know, little day trips here and there, only like, you know, a time or two a year. We don't take fancy vacations or any of that right now. That is not where we're at in life. Like I said, my husband is in school. We're trying to make some moves over here, okay? And, you know, that's just how life is right now. But we are so incredibly grateful for what God has given us. Having a roof over our head and food in the fridge. We have come a long way, a long, long way. I remember when we couldn't put food in the fridge. We were heavily struggling and, you know, we have faced a lot of different things in life, even homelessness, you guys. One day, maybe I'll tell that story, but it has been a wild ride, but we are doing a lot better. And I'm so grateful for that. But, you know, these are the things that I do on a daily basis to save money in my homemaking. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions down below. I can do a part two. I just kind of took you through my day of what we typically do and why we do it. And usually result in saving money because I'm just naturally kind of a frugal person. Besides my clothing, I invest in my clothing. I like good quality clothing that's going to last for many years. I have a capsule wardrobe. My kids do too. I thrift a lot of their clothes as well as small shops and pass them down from every kid and keep them pretty neutral as well so every kid can wear them. Anyway, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, let me know if you have any questions or if I didn't cover something, then, you know, we can talk about it again in the future. But if you guys are struggling, if your pockets aren't looking right or whatever the case is and you're not doing like some major renovations or have this fancy house, you know, don't feel bad about it. OK, that's just reality. That's how normal people, I should say, live maybe I shouldn't say normal people, the majority of people kind of live in America, okay? A lot of us are not millionaires and that is okay. You just have to count your blessings and be deep in your gratitude because I know I am. Even if I had a million dollars, you guys, I would not be living much different than what I'm living like now. I love my life. I love my life and I love the way we do it and I love you know, just not spending a lot of money. I like to keep my money in my pocket for emergencies and stuff like that. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Leave me your video ideas down below. I would love to know what kind of videos you guys want to see and I will see you next time. Bye.